Today, I will be talking about something that is very true for me, as I believe it is for millions of other people around the planet, including our students who are pursuing careers in languages and cultures. I will be talking to you in English, which clearly is not my first language, right? And you know that because I speak with an accent. Why would I be doing such a thing? Well, if I'm going to be addressing a mainly English-speaking audience, I should do it in your language. And I can only speak English with an accent. Having an accent means that you have dared to immerse yourself in another culture, in another language, in your adult life. That means that you decided to live the same life that you would have lived back in your country of origin, but in another nation, in another latitude, in another hemisphere, in another climate, with people that were brought up very differently from you, uh, with different cultural practices, with a very different historical background, and still you decided to embrace that opportunity and learn to love it. Those of us who learn a language beyond, adult, beyond childhood very probably will keep an accent for the rest of our lives. We will use slightly peculiar ways of constructing meaning and when we talk or when we write, and I don't mean to imply that we are incomprehensible at all, but simply that we sound differently, that we are perceived as different, but more importantly is that we think differently precisely because we speak another language. There is now scientific evidence that the languages that we speak shape the way we think. And I want to invite you to check the, the research by neuroscientist scientist Lira Boroditsky, whose research demonstrates that the languages that we speak shape the way we think. For example, some languages pay more attention to who performed an action, and other languages pay more attention to the consequences of that action. Um, directing our brain's attention to two different, different aspects of the same action. Um, so that is very different and demands very different skills from us. So multilinguals and bilingual people can perceive a wider range of meaning as we go through our date. That makes us very unique. And, uh, there are about 7,000 languages spoken in the world, and somewhere between 350 and 430 of those languages are spoken in the United States, making of this country one of the most linguistically and culturally diverse on the planet. For example, Spanish. We can say that Spanish is not a foreign language in the United States anymore. There are places where you can go where everybody speaks Spanish, everything is in Spanish, no English to be seen or to be heard anywhere. I'm thinking of places like Hialeah or Coral Gables in Florida, as some other cities in California, New Mexico and Arizona. You might think that you're in a different country when you go there, but you're not. It's the same country united by different languages. According to the U.S. Census, there are about 68 million people that speak a language other than English at home. And this number has increased three times between 1980 and 2019. And one in five in U.S. homes speaks another language besides English, which is pretty cool. That includes our students. So, Children can learn a second language easily if they're exposed to that language from, from early, early times, from early age. And this is the case of millions of children in Africa, a continent to which humanity owes that much. People in Africa often speak two, three, four languages. And notice that I say languages, not dialects. Let's not think about languages as a privilege of Western societies while whatever the rest of the world speaks are dialects, because nothing would be farther away from the truth. Anything that humans use to communicate with each other is a language. This early, uh, early ability to learn is lost as we grow older. So for adults, acquiring another language is an entirely 
different experience. We have to think about similitudes to and differences from the primary language. We have to memorize verbal conjugations in our students' case, the use of prepositions in our case, and so on. It is a pretty devoted journey, I must admit. But as our students can tell you, it is an absolutely worthy journey to travel. Bilinguals and multilinguals have many skills, and among those we can mention flexibility. Empathy, a skill that Forbes magazine from September 2021 identifies as pivotal for effective leadership, agency, resilience, adaptability, creative problem solving on the spot, imagination, and overall humility. Our students learn to appreciate the cultures outside of the United States and appreciate the opportunities they can find there. They also learn that people can live happily in other societies. <laughs> and they also learn that assumed, assumptions that they might have grown up with regarding other cultures are not necessarily truth. They also often report to have found a different self within themselves when they're immersed in another culture. Pretty cool, right? Yes. So let me tell you that we adult learners dream often in the other language, and in our dreams we have no accent. We can hear ourselves without an accent. Uh, we also, the words come very rapidly from your mind to your tongue, and conversations move flawlessly from one language to the other. Uh, you also read about people that after having a concussion wake up speaking a language that fluently, a language that they perhaps took a semester of many years back. Or people that wake up after a concussion speaking the same language but with a different accent. So how come, what happens? How can brains do these things? Scientists cannot give us a very conclusive experience at this point. What is certain is that by acquiring another language, we can have direct access to other cultures. For example, during our senior seminar last spring, seniors across languages research about immigration trends. And they, they could learn to the minute what was being said in the countries of interest about immigration, how immigration was being perceived. And we could have these super nurture, nurturing conversations about it and compare and contrast how immigration was being perceived by these cultures. Um, according to the World Development Report, there are about 184 million people, that's 2.3% of the world's population, living outside of their country of origin. So it's very probable that many of these people had to learn a language as an adult, and very likely they speak with an accent. There is an abundant body of scholarship about the experience of this experience of being among different cultures and different languages, this in-betweenness, as some theoreticians call the experience, these hyphenated identities. Here's a sample of that. So every college and university in the United States promises students to provide them with a global education. I have news for you. There's not such a thing as a global citizen in a monolingual mind. It doesn't exist, no matter what you're told. Those of us who work in languages and cultures know perfectly well that in order to bridge the gap among cultures and become a true global citizen, one has to dare to learn other languages because that is the only way to get to know other cultures in depth and on their own terms. So today, I want to invite you to consider crossing that border within, that according to a magnificent novel by Mexican novelist Carlos Fuentes says is the most difficult border to cross, the one within. So I want to invite you today to consider crossing that border within and there to become true global citizens by learning other languages and by immersing yourselves in other cultures. Uh, you will probably have an accent, but at that point, <laughs> you would know that you are on the right path to become a true global citizen and that should be all right so adelante and thank you very much <laughs>